me about the start of Muse now. Um, we started with uh, <coughs> I lived in a town called Timoth, which is like southwest countryside of of England. It's sort of quite a very rural place, about a few hours from London, right? And um, it's quite there's nothing really happened there. It's very boring, especially for kids around 13, 15. There's, you couldn't get into the bars, couldn't drink, and there was no nightlife. There's nothing to do really. So it's just we used to you know drink a lot and stuff and do stuff like that down the seafront, you know. And it wasn't really it wasn't very very good. And I started hanging out with these girls who were like really hot. And like they were like, um, they wanted to be witches, you know. And um, and I thought I might have been on something because I thought it was a load of bullshit, you know. Because well, at the time I was doing all this Ouija board stuff with my mum, and I was thinking, so I was, I was I was involved with that. I don't believe that now, but at the time I think when I met these girls, I thought I thought it was a chance to get laid, you know. And um, and they and they were talking about getting in bands and stuff. So we started getting bands together. I started wearing loads of makeup actually and all this stupid hair and stuff and I was just trying to get laid with these women you know, really but but that was sort of how it started with these different bands um, but then as we got to about the age of 16 most of the bands started splitting up and people started losing interest in that and um, me, Dom and Chris formed a band called Rocket Baby Dolls and, um, and it's just the three of us and we, only, we formed that name just for one week to, in order to first of all try and lose a, to get these women you know what I mean and they're like they dressed us up and stuff. We started hanging out with them, and, and it was starting to happen. And we were still wearing all this stuff from Rocket Baby Dolls. And we went into this competition, like a Battle of the Bands contest with all these other bands. And, and uh, all the other bands were like really sort of funky, sort of pub rock, you know, and they were like older. So we went there just to take the piss out of it, really. And we sort of chucked our instruments around and, uh, and did all this sort of thing. And had these, we had all these women on stage naked and shit. And, um, and we, th we did it all just to take the piss, you know. But we ended up winning. And when we won the competition, that sort of. We suddenly thought, actually, maybe, maybe we should do, do this more seriously. So we started. We changed the name to Muse and sort of mellowed out a bit for a while. Not musically, the music was still real heavy, but we sort of just concentrated on making music for the next couple of years, really. And then we released our first EP when we were about 19. Could you explain the name change? Why? Um, the, the, we were called Rocket Baby Dolls because it was a Japanese porn film we saw and, um, and we, we saw it with these girls and we were sort of all dressing up together, you know? And um, it's just like a... At the time, I was in other bands called Gothic Plague, which were different members, it wasn't Dom and Chris. When Dom and Chris got together, we only got together f to form this one thing for one week, you know? And it was, but when we won, it was when we won the competition that we realised actually we should stay together and, and, we, and that was when we actually took it more seriously and, and put together like an actual band, you know. Before that it was, it was more like a, a, just a bit of theatrical fun, you um, According to the press, through the press in Britain, you're quite, quite upfront as persons and, and, uh, and uh, Theatrical. Yeah. Do you see yourself? Um, I see myself not very often, really. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe there's an element of. I think when we're on stage, you know, when we're playing on stage, I think that's really who I am, you know, that's, that's like being, that's the most honest person I could be. It's like everything inside me coming out, you know, and, uh, and that's like, I love, that's what I love about playing live, that's why I love playing live so much. It's one of the main reasons I got into the band was to get that feeling, you know, of like, of pure freedom. And, um, and the thing is, if, if, you get, if you get used to doing, if you get used to doing gigs like every day and stuff, and you, get, you get used to living like that, I think you generally become a little bit more open, you become a bit more sort of like you, that that sort of way of thinking starts to rub off in your everyday life you know and um and you start so i think it's probably something to, maybe maybe i'm not sure, I'm not sure about theatrical but I don't, I don't think really i don't think we're anything different to other people you know I mean, it's just the same as anyone else really but just having a good time as much as possible really. and um well on stage on stage it's you're pushing yourself to your limits, you know, you're finding your own physical limits, <coughs> finding out what notes I can sing and how, you know, you're pushing yourself. So in that process, maybe, you know, you react in a way that is flamboyant, you know, I think that's just being on stage, you know. Um, and, and the press again, they <laughs> accuse you of, like, copying a famous 
famous <laughs> band called like um, from York's band. Yes, like you, 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 um, you react to that. Um, I don't, don't, really, don't really mind too much. Um, I think I think that people, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. You know, everyone says what they want. I think that's what makes the world interesting. You know, some people love it, some people hate it, some people think you're fake, some people think you're the realest thing. You know, it's just different opinions, and I think that conflict is interesting. I'd, I'd rather that than everyone being the same. You know, so I think everyone can just, just everyone can say what they want, and I don't. You know, I'm interested whether it's good or bad. Um, could you describe your music? Um, I'd say it's like a combination of modern rock styles, you know, things like Rage Against the Machine to um, Queen, <laughs> no, <laughs> Rage Against the Machine, a bit Jeff Buckley maybe or something, but a combination of modern rock combined with an appreciation for the history of the evolution of, of music, you know. I listened to a lot of, I, listened, I did a lot of flamenco guitar stuff, a lot of flamenco lessons, not lessons, I mean flamenco learning. Um, Spanish guitar, that's like folk music, so some folk music from Europe and like I, like, I listen to a bit, a bit of classical music as well, so that's what I mean when I say the history, the history of the evolution of different musics from European history because European has, has a great you know, evolution of music over, over hundreds of years um, that probably combined with some modern American rock type stuff yeah. hmm. On stage do you see yourself as a guitar god? Fucking hell, no, no, <laughs> no, not at all. No, yeah, it's, it's a bit of um, on on stage. It's like it's a bit a bit of tongue in cheek, you know, like a bit when when you're doing the guitar thing because the guitar thing is so done. Everyone's done. You've had all the great guitarists. If you see like if you see like a band like Weezer or something like that, you know, they they play their guitar and it's like and they do all these like all these rock poses, you know. It's like it's a bit of fun, really. It's it's not. Um, I don't think that way, you know, I'm sort of like taking the piss out of that sort of thing, you know. Um, I, like, I mean, I like, I like playing the guitar a lot, um, but it's, um, um, I just sort of, I don't know, I, I don't really think I'm like, I think, I think like, there's, there's so many good guitarists everywhere, you know, everyone, you know, any, you know anyone can. So. We'll go back to the songs then. Um, you know, the ideas for the songs you write, from, from where, from where words come from. It's like um, as as um, I've, I've become used to change. I think in my life. When I was younger, when I was like when I lived with my mum for a while, I used to like move house every six months. You know, and I sort of beca I became used to things changing all the time. And I sort of like. I learned to like it. You know, it got to the point where you, you travel light. You start to reduce the amount of possessions you have. I'm sorry. You start to start to you know. If, if you live in one place, in the same house, the same friends, and the same job for years and years and years, and the same possessions and everything, you start to believe that is your identity, you know? Um, I, um, I have none of those things. I have no consistency, and I, I like that. I, everything's changing all the time. So, but when everything does change around you, and you become used to changing, you become in touch with the one thing that is consistent, you know? And the thing that's consistent is something inside you, which is like, not really that in it's not like a pure individual it's something that everyone has inside them I think and you realize that there's no such thing as an individual we're just a collection of each other's influence on each other you know but everyone everyone says things to each other you look to the television your parents your friends that's all we are is a collection of, of intermingling ideas as a collective you know uh, we, we just get given this thing that I'm talking about inside uh, to make us perceive space-time from one point um, in order to make each other activate with each other in a chaotic manner and when there's chaos there's evolution and that's why we have that is so we evolve and, um, and I think that I write songs that is from that thing inside trying to find meaning in all the chaotic and random images and memories sort of searching for um, a purpose or meaning in that and uh, so sometimes it can be, if, you, if it's a feeling about, say you have the feeling of, of, um, of anger or something, then that feeling will search through all the random memories and pick out little bits, you know, little moments.
bits of music you've heard, bits from here, a bit from there, a little bit of a, a, a someone said something to you then, or it could be a memory of a girl you're with, or you know, a whole lot of things, and uh, and they all go into one song, you know, just like sort of because I'm I'm sort of trying to look at the whole thing as one, you know. Um, the new stuff sounds quite hard compared to the old stuff, like it's really massive. <laughs> that change, it's not like, it's not um, in, in tender. Oh. Uh, it's just sort of, I, th I think no, nothing was really intended, you know, no, there's, there's been no real grand plan to, to, to you know, sort of take it as it comes. And, uh, and uh, literally uh, taking it as it comes, um, not really planning too much. Um, so, so I'd say anything, yeah, in the album, it's just just how we felt at the time, you know, and just sort of just put it down at the moment and didn't really worry about anything, you know, just did it. I think that's the best way, best way of doing it, really, because then, then, then it's more honest. Mm. Mm. Okay. When live, why smash? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's strange you say it because that's my old guitar tech. That's my old guitar tech up there, and he and he, um, he left me because I used to smash the guitars, and now he works for feeder. <laughs> I, had to, I had to get a new one in. Um, and um, why? Um, I don't, don't really do it every time. We've really done it sometimes, you know. Maybe uh, it's just depends. Sometimes, if sometimes you have a very bad concert or something, or sometimes you feel like. If you feel you've exercised negative energy and it becomes negative still, then you you need to do something like that. I know I've I've, I've broke I've, I've, it's not a case of breaking guitars. It's like um, it's like um, it's not breaking guitars. It's, it's like it's like a, it's like an expression that comes out of you and it's like it's physically. Sometimes it's really serious and it's like ah, oh, you want to fucking destroy destroy everything, and then sometimes it's more like a bit of fun, you know, like. Just chucking it around and like rolling. Sometimes they usually end up on top of. Um, some, sometimes we just want to have a bundle, you know, me, Don, and Chris. We just want to get close, and uh, we end up getting into a bundle and rolling around on the drums and stuff. And it's sort of like, it's like um, it's like a finale, you know. But we 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 already done that sometimes. The best concerts is when we don't do that because when we don't do that, it means we feel that we've delivered everything through the music, and you don't need to go any, anywhere else, you know. So sometimes you have a concert where you think could have, you could have played better or something, and then that's why sometimes you you end up just losing the plot a little bit. So we know that if you feel that it's a bad concert, you're just breaking stuff. Yeah, <laughs> not a bad concert. I mean, some, sometimes those concerts from the audience can seem better because. You see us like maybe it's, maybe like the most, um, for the most typical time would be like say the guitar was, was having problems or something it was all all the guitar was shit you know or something. But, um, don't really do that now you know. Now we try and now, now we try and end the gigs on a really on a more positive way like we have all these big weather balloons that come down and and everyone sort of pops them and confetti goes everywhere and there's like balloons and generally a bit more. Gem generally a bit more happy, happy, you know, happy ending. Don't even want a happy ending. So it's a party now. A little bit more, yeah. Man, in like here in this country, we read loads about all the all the different bands fighting mm. each other. Why par participate in that? Um, well, I didn't. I, it's difficult when someone. It's difficult when someone attacks you. <laughs> uh, it's difficult not to retaliate back, you know. But I don't really participate in that. I try not to really. And um, silly, you know. It's English. It's a lot of English people are very, very uptight, you know, and very boring. <laughs> Just so fucking boring, you know. And it's like. Um, They should all chill out a bit more, get pissed up, get you know, just fucking get laid a bit more often. And I, I think that that's the problem, really. Everyone's so sort of it's quite a small place. It's like a small, it's, it's like quite a small country, but with lots of people. So everyone's like squabbling for their little bit of space, you know. Um, so that's maybe something to do with it. But again, I, I saw something with Muse and the Funics, hmm. where they attack you and then. It came back to them. But can you, can you, like, tell about that coincidence? Um, 
Uh, I don't know. I, 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 we played with Stereophonics twice in USA. We did concerts with them and seemed very friendly, very nice people. And we chat the singer. I had a chat with him. Seemed like a nice guy, you know. Yeah, nice guy. Uh, and, then, and then suddenly he started going to the press saying all sorts of stuff about us. And I just thought, what a little fucking twat. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And he's very little. Um, and I don't know why. I mean. I don't know why. I don't know why. Did, I, what should I do? Should I just ignore it? Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I just ignore that. The only, the only, reason, the only reason. Okay. Yeah, what, what it was, the thing with Stereophonics is like, they're okay. I mean, I, if someone says, like, are oh, you skinny, pretentious wanker, yeah, I can go, fair enough, I am. You know? <laughs> but, um, but if someone says, if someone says, like, you know, if someone makes, makes an attack on me, I don't mind, yeah, that's fine. I can laugh that sort of thing off. But, it, but he, 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 he said something that was, like, Ill illegal. He said that we'd, he said that we'd asked for a concert for £20,000 from him and that we turned it down because we wanted to get more money, and that's not true. So it's it's okay like if if you say something like oh their music shit I hate you that's funny you know but if they say like oh you you try to steal money from us that's like there's a legal problem with that you know so I had to say something back to say that it was a lie you know because because or else we could have been in trouble with our agents you know for booking concerts because we were trying to book concerts for the summer and all the all the booking agents were going ah we read what we read that you demanded twenty five thousand pounds and turned it down from stereophonics and it's not true it's a complete lie absolute lie and it turns out there's a misunderstanding between their agent and our agent that was where the argument started because they're booking a thing and um so i had to say something back to make it safe for us you know and um but also i added a couple of things <laughs> <laughs> but those things, those things I added are true. That they they demand they demanded 1.7 million pounds to play Reading Festival, and and that they stole the PRS rights, Performing Rights Society, from a sp small band who was supporting them. And PRS money is like PRS money is, is one of the only monies you get when you're a new band, you know, because you, all your money is owed to the record company. So the PRS is Performing Rights for writing music. Um, Stereophonics took that away from the support band. Um, Andy Christian, and um, so I just found that very difficult to be. They're accusing us of being, you know, what I mean? money grabbers, and, we, and it was all lies. And so I just found that very difficult to swallow. So you just battle alone. <laughs> okay, then lastly, could you tell us a good story? What about? That's what sort of story? A true, a, a true story. Yeah. A true story. Um. About what? Muse. Yeah. Well, it it could be from your tour in right. in Japan. Oh, oh, you want those sort of stories? Yeah. You want those sort of stories? <laughs> That's not the same thing. Oh, okay. Um. The, the other day, once upon a time. We we did a gig in we did a gig in um, actually I know I probably shouldn't tell you this but it's a secret well it's not a secret Dom knows Dom's the drummer in the band yeah um, but I've secretly been filming him having sex <laughs> he doesn't know and I've got like um, and uh, I've got like footage of him like because he can't he, he always he always tries to get he, he's always looking for girls you know always which is not a bad thing but he's always he always does it in public you know <laughs> like in a space like, or like on the side and um, and um, and I got I got camera footage, and I'm going to put it up on the um, on the website at some point. You will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, but so he doesn't know. So it's a bit, a bit, a bit yeah. Is that the sort of thing you want to know? Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so look out, look out on the website for for Dom's Willy. <laughs> okay.